Hi, my name is Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. I applied to 154 grad schemes and jobs and internships during my final year of uni and right after. And simply put, it was a horrible experience. I literally had a full-time job applying to jobs. Either way, in this video, I will just go over the grad scheme application process and explain how it works. Obviously, I didn't get to like the final stage in all my 154 applications. So this will be like the average application process. I suppose, as most of them are pretty similar. And I definitely do not speak on behalf of the company that I work for now. I just want to put that out there clearly that this is based on my own personal experience applying to 154 grad schemes. Let's get into it. So the first step is to fill out the online application form. Generally speaking, the portals of the most popular companies to apply for, for graduate schemes, they open up in around September, October, and they'll close relatively be soon afterwards when they hit the maximum number of applications and for this step you effectively just need a resume, your name, your address, like your personal info, a cover letter. Some portals actually require you to upload a cover letter, other ones they just say it's optional and some of them don't even have the option to upload a cover letter. So this step is actually quite straightforward. You just, you know, upload a resume, upload a cover letter. Please do make your resume in advance and not on a last date because you're gonna forget to to put stuff on there. Don't forget to put all your education on it. Don't forget to put like all your relevant experience on it. So please, those are the things you need to do in advance of September and October to get that like cover letter sorted or at least a couple versions of it so that you can use it and adjust it along the way for whatever you're applying for. And also your resume you needs to get that sorted in advance. And some of these portals are just open for like barely a week, which is very few of them, but they definitely do exist. They close right down after like the first five days. <laughs> So then if you pass the first step of like filling out a form effectively, you'll then be invited to a psychometric test. Most companies I applied for got back to me either immediately after I hit the submit button on the application form or within like three days. And they frame it as that you have to take an aptitude test. Generally, they give you about five-ish days to finish the test. So do keep in mind that when you hit that submit button on that form, you then are also probably stuck with taking a test in the next week. So make sure that you have time for that and not that you have all my all finals or exams or other things to study for. So make sure that you actually have time to take those tests. Generally, it took me about an hour to two hours to de do these psychometric tests. And there were definitely exceptions in both directions. I think the worst one that I did was about six hours, which was definitely only one. And the shortest one was probably like 15 minutes, but they kept on sending me stuff. So it was like 15 minutes, three days, and then 15 minutes, and then another three days. So it's definitely different things out there, but most of them, they tend to use similar platforms or the same platforms. And you'll have about like an hour to two hours of like online psychometrics aptitude thingies that you have to do. There is only one platform that actually would save my answers so that I could submit to multiple companies. That was really helpful. But then again, every single company is using a different platform. So there definitely have been tests I've taken about 10 times, which definitely didn't make the process any less frustrating than it already was. But then if you pass the psychometric test stage, you'll move on to the one-way video interview, which is normally around like September, October, November-ish. And I found this to be an incredibly lonely experience because it's a one-way video interview effectively you log on to the portal that you get sent in the link again you'll have about like five-ish days to do this and then you'll be prompted with a video which generally explains you how the portal works how the process works of doing this video one-way video interview they take about like 30 minutes to do and generally they give you about like five questions so the structure is that when you hit start you'll be prompted with another video of a person reading you the question then you have about two minutes to think about your answer and then you have an immediate three minutes afterwards where you will be recorded where you then have to give your answer you can end the three minutes like prematurely if you're finished saying your answer you don't have to sit there in silence until the three minutes are over but that's the general structure of it and then they'll show you a little playback of it of your answer and some portals will give you the option to redo it and some don't i personally only once redid one of my answers because somebody rang the doorbell and the other ones i've never either 
video saw, seen the playback. I've never watched the playback because it's just so awkward. And I never redid any of my answers because I just felt that that would give me an additional pressure that I don't need. Because you cannot then go back to your first answer, if that makes sense, that one will get removed. But if you pass the video interview stage, you'll generally move on to an interview with an actual person, which I preferred so much more because it's more like an actual conversation that you're having with a person. Most of my actual interviews were in like October, November, December, and there tended to be a little bit of a gap between my video interview and me getting invited back to an actual interview. And normally I would get like an email explaining that I made it to this stage and then I could click on like a link and they would show me a calendar and I could choose between like three different dates and times, something like that. And I'd select that and then I would have my interview on that given day and I'd get like a confirmation and a like Zoom link to do the interview. That was effectively how it worked. These interviews generally last about like 30 minutes. So normally if you pass your interview, you'll get moved on to the assessment center, which is a half day to a day type thing where you will participate in group exercises, sometimes a solo exercise, sometimes another interview or like a role play thing. Often they also have a bit of an information session about what the graduate scheme will actually be like. So you get to ask some questions about the grad scheme. But yeah, they are quite exhausting and most companies just have one assessment day. Some of them have like three and then you can pick one. But I very much found that it's either one or three. There is not really like an in-between, if that makes sense. So you go to that assessment center. If you cannot make it for the like companies with one assessment center days, if you cannot make it, you also generally forfeit your chance of actually ending up in the role. But yeah, that's a bit of a shame. But it's also a bit understandable because it's quite hard to organize something like this because it is quite a big thing, especially at some companies. Some of them are absolutely tiny and just a half day. Others were absolutely exhausting. So then stage number six, which is the stage after the assessment center is often the job offer. The assessment center is often the last stage in the application process. And normally within like two weeks, you'll get an email that they or like a callback from either HR or somebody senior. I have found that if HR tends to reach out, it's often bad news. While if somebody senior in the company reaches out to you, it's normally good news. It definitely does not work for every single company. This just happens to happen to me a couple of times. But yeah, I thought it was a bit of a fun side note. And so not all, but some of the companies that extended me a job offer actually required me to respond within a certain time if I wanted to accept it. Yes or no? This is the general structure of most of the graduate schemes that I have applied for. As always, there are exceptions, but even those generally boil down to the same structure of having the online form, then having the psychometric tests, then doing a one-way video interview, then having an actual interview, and then the assessment center, and then the job offer, yes or no. That's essentially the path that you'll take to get to a grad scheme. I would definitely recommend start looking at grad schemes as early as possible. Make a list of the companies that you're interested in, get your resume sorted, get that cover letter sorted, because as soon as September hits, it will be application season and just, you know, go for it. If it doesn't work out, which obviously can happen, don't panic, because often around like March, April-ish, there's more of internships, like some internships or whole year internships that open up their applications as well. So you can jump straight from the grad scheme applications into the internship applications. So that's also an option. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you and good luck applying to graduate schemes and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.